Hey there, today I want to show you how to change materials and part of the materials at runtime. So let's start by simply changing a material. Here we have a variable for the ground, a variable for the new ground material and the old ground material. And we need a mesh renderer for the ground. So in the start method we get the mesh renderer from our ground game object. Then get the material and set the scale from the new material to the old one. Now we can simply assign a new material or the old one to the mesh renderer material. We decide which one we have to assign by the name of the material which is currently on our mesh renderer. We have to use the start with method because the name gets an addition instance when you assign a material. But sometimes you don't want to have a hard cut between materials. So here we interpolate between two materials and generate a nice pulse effect. For this we use two materials. They are basically the same, but with a different color. So the variables are pretty much the same as for the ground. We need a sphere, a new sphere material, an old sphere material, and the mesh renderer of the sphere. We also have a duration and a bool variable to start a ping pong. So in the start method, we first get the mesh renderer from our sphere, and then make a copy for the old sphere material. It's important to make a copy and not a reference because otherwise we will interpolate between the same material. So in the update method we can check if we should start the ping pong. And then get a lerp value from math.pingpong with our time and our duration. We can then lerp between the old sphere material and the new sphere material. We can then set the bool variable in a new method which is binded by a key. But maybe you don't want to work with two materials and just change the material. In this example we change the emission. You find this directly in the material as a checkbox. So because the emission is a special unity value, it is represented as a keyword. So we can check if it's enabled with is keyword enabled and then disable it or enable it. A simpler way to influence your material is if you have your own shader. So this is just a simple shader with shader graph. It just updates the tiling offset calculated by the time and a speed variable. If you click on the variable you see the name and the reference. The reference usually starts with an underline and the name of the variable. You can influence that but it's really common that way. So to change the value of the variable you can just call the material dot set float with the variable name and your value. If you have other types of variables you may have to use another method. So in play mode I can now change the speed of the offset. In this case it looks like a rotation. And I can also change it to a negative value so it runs backwards. So I hope you learned something new today. Subscribe to watch more tutorials and I'm sure I see you in the next.